Welcome back to our Fixer Upper and welcome to our kitchen. We have big plans for this kitchen, including knocking out this wall and building out our dream kitchen, but we're not quite ready for that project. We need to live with this kitchen in its current layout a little while longer. So to get us by, we're gonna do a small renovation. Someone before us did their own renovation, but honestly, not very well. They used beadboard for the backsplash, which is not waterproof, and it's not good for a wet area, so it's swelling. The walls have this dated texture, and someone did terrible patch jobs. The light fixtures are just not our style, and this window is single pane and very old. The cabinetry is well built, but the paint job is really bad. We can do better. And maybe the worst part are these countertops. The butcher block wasn't finished appropriately, so they are peeling and sticky. And if it's kind of wet, good luck if you lay a grocery receipt down because there's gonna be evidence of it there forever. I'm going to reuse and update what I can and add some new things along the way. So let's see how good this kitchen can look and welcome back to Maker Gray. The countertops are going to take a few days, so let's get started there. This is one of the worst ones and maybe the easiest to remove, so we're gonna start here. With that drawer removed, you can see the clips. There's gonna be one here, back there, some on the other side as well that are holding the countertop to the cabinet. Now I just need to cut through this thick bead of caulk and the countertop should break free. were unscrewed, the caulk was cut, but I could not get this piece off. Well, I think we're gonna have to take off this beadboard. One of my pet peeves is when people just paint over outlet covers or switch covers. Can't stand that. And finally, with the sheetrock removed, oh. it was free. I need some temporary countertops, so I grab some cheap plywood and cut out four pieces for the short term. Okay, let's refinish these old counters. I've been looking forward to this part. I started by sanding them down to bare wood, which honestly was harder than I expected because the bad finish kept gumming up. Any chance I got though to grab a hold of the finish and peel it up was very satisfying. With all of the top sanded down, it's time to add finish. These are the finishes that I'm using and I have a whole separate tutorial video covering this process if you are interested. I've linked it down below. This finish works super well for butcher block countertops. It's waterproof and it lasts years. However, in hindsight, I do wish I would have changed it up for these particular counters so I could have retained the light color in the wood instead of the amber color that this finish produces. Stay tuned to the end and I'll talk on that some more. Okay, while that is drying, let's start getting this wall ready. So with that shelf gone, you can really see how bumpy and lumpy and how terrible a shape this sheetrock is in. I need a flat surface to tile on. I also need access to the studs so I can do some floating shelf hardware properly. Um, and I have a bunch of sheetrock in the garage from an old project that I need to use. So for all of those reasons, I'm going to take this bad stuff down and add some new, start fresh with a nice flat surface. I'm going to cut out the sheetrock and a level line laser will get me a perfectly straight cut line. I used my oscillating tool to cut the wall, followed by my shop back to minimize the dust. I'm removing this sheetrock behind the sink because I want to replace it with a proper waterproof backer board, which I'll show you in just a minute. I just put another coat on the countertops while those are drying. Next up on the list is the kitchen window. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it's super old, it's single pane, it needs replacing. So while those are drying, let's knock out this window. I'm not reusing this trim, so I wasn't careful to not break it. I'm going to change it up and I'll show you that in just a minute. 
This window is on the face of a wall with really not much protection. There's a small overhang up there. All these years ago, they didn't put any flashing or any kind of waterproofing, so I'm not super surprised, but there is just a ton of rot in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go grab some two by fours, I'm gonna replace that wood, and then we're gonna uh, waterproof it correctly when I put the new window in. All of this wood has to be removed to expose the window flange to remove the window. After uncovering more of the siding, I found that the two x four sill that the window sits on was also rotting from moisture. I finally got down to the window flange, removed all of the nails, and I was able to get this old window on out. Now I can use my reciprocating saw to cut out this rotting sill board so I can replace it. Okay, let's waterproof this window opening correctly. I started with a strip of flashing tape and I installed it corner to corner on the sill. This stretch tape stretches to conform to the corners and makes waterproofing easy with no seams. I then continued with the flashing, working up the sides of the frame. And now I can set in the new window and attach it with screws all along the nail flange. Next, I covered the flange with flashing on all sides, starting with the bottom, then the sides overlapping the bottom, and then lastly, the top overlapping the sides so that no water can get in. I mentioned that I was gonna change out the exterior window trim, and the new material that I'm using is cedar. It's an excellent exterior wood, and I love the warm contrast of it. Okay, back inside below the window, I mentioned that I was going to add a more suitable waterproofing board, and for that I'm using cement board. It's a moisture resistant material that can withstand damp conditions, unlike standard drywall. Now let's start the prep for painting these cabinets. I removed all of the doors and drawers so I can paint them separate from the cabinet bases. To prep for paint, Hannah is going to clean them well with a degreaser spray. Cleaning all of the cabinets before painting is a crucial step. I removed some of the old insulation that I could easily access in this open wall and I replaced it with a better mineral wool insulation. I'm going to add floating shelves to this wall and I wanna go ahead and figure out the placement. I like to visualize with tape before I add any hardware so I can make sure the placement is right before moving forward. I like this placement for the shelves, so I'm gonna go ahead and add these, these uh, brackets for the floating shelves while I have the studs exposed. I got these hidden floating shelf brackets, which are solid steel and apparently can hold up to 80 pounds when attached to studs. The end of this cabinet is beadboard and I really would like to eliminate that look in the remodel. So I'm gonna see if I can take this off and replace it with a scrap sheet of quarter inch plywood that I found in my garage. At the flat look will just, I think, look a lot better. Goodbye beadboard. I'm going to piece together drywall for this wall because I have some scraps to use up, which will be just fine because all of this will be under tile soon. Here's a tip for you if you're ever doing drywall, pick up one of these drywall screw setting bits. It controls the depth of the screw so you don't break through the paper and drill too far. I'll link it for you down in the description. Here is where we discovered something super frustrating and our plans totally changed. What you got? Paint's starting to come off after I put cleaner on it. No. It's starting to bubble up. It's gonna come up pretty easy. What does that mean? That there's probably oil under there? That they painted it incorrectly? Probably. Oh man. Yeah. It's coming right off. Ooh. 
We found out that the previous owners painted latex paint over an oil paint without a primer, which has zero adhesion. A definite fail. When Hannah went to give them a good cleaning, the top paint just started rubbing right off. We consulted the pros and found out that we were going to have to switch gears and do just what you're seeing here. Scrape off every inch of the top paint so we can get back down to the bottom original oil layer. If for some reason this happens to you, Crud Cutter is what we were using as a degreaser and it turns out it's an excellent spray to remove latex paint that is improperly applied over oil. And if you're wondering if we could just sand them down, I tried to sand off the latex, but strangely it didn't really work. The crud cutter worked out so much better. We would spray on the degreaser, let it soak in for a minute, and then scrape the paint right off. You can see the white top latex paint coming off, revealing the kind of yellow oil paint below. This was unexpected, slow, and honestly super painful and annoying, but unfortunately a necessary step to move forward. With the doors finally done, we filled in the holes from the old handles with wood filler, sanded everything down, and they were finally ready for paint. The side of our fridge is exposed and I love a built-in look. So before painting, I'm gonna cut some plywood and make this fridge look like it was intentionally enclosed. And here I added iron-on edge banding to make the edges of the plywood look like solid wood. I'm going to be painting the cabinets with a sprayer which makes it so easy. But you have to spend the time masking off areas that you don't want painted. I used brown paper and masked off the inside of the cabinets because we want to keep them their natural wood color. I also covered the appliances, the ceiling around the cabinets, and also the floor. Okay, I have to show you one of my favorite investments for home renovation. I use it over and over. It's worth it. Zip wall. Check this out. It's kind of dirty. It's been in my garage. It comes with four of these poles. Some other things in here that I probably won't use right now. The tops of the poles attach to a sheet of plastic and then the poles extend to hold up a temporary plastic wall where you want dust, or in this case, paint, contained. Okay, finally on to painting. I'm excited to try out Wagner's Flexio 3500, which I hear is a really great handheld HVLP paint sprayer and good for interior and exterior projects. Inside the storage case, you're gonna find two nozzles, one for broad surfaces like walls or fences, and a detail finish nozzle for smooth, fine finishes, and of course the lightweight sprayer, which has the power to spray unthinned paints and stains right from the can. I'm excited to try this out. It also comes with these cup liners, which I think are gonna make cleanup super easy. I'm starting with Extreme Bond Primer, recommended by Sherwin-Williams. I put this cardboard here for my first test sprays. The Flexio 3500 has multiple adjustable settings like adjusting your flow, spray pattern, and your airspeed. Once I adjusted everything to find my sweet spot for an ideal spray, it was go time. It's hard to see this white primer against the already white cabinets, but you'll get a better look when I spray color in just a minute but I can tell you that I was very impressed with how this sprayer was laying down this very thick primer. Sherwin-Williams told me to spray the primer on thin, so I followed that direction, but this sprayer could have sprayed it thicker if necessary. I sprayed every cabinet, door, and drawer with the primer and gave it a good 24 hours to cure. And here you can see how easy cleanup was with these cup liners. I feel like it saves a lot of paint too. The next day I hit some spots with a light sanding and then I was ready to get on to the good part. Check out this gorgeous color. I've done mostly neutrals in the past and I'm trying to introduce color a little more. Let me know down below in the comments what you think. Uh -oh. <laughs> Super smooth. This is Sherwin-Williams Emerald paint in the color Waterloo. 
Okay, now on to the exciting part. Within the first few seconds, I already knew that we made the right decision picking this color. Let me just go ahead and say that this Flexio 3500 does an outstanding job at laying down this paint. Excellent coverage, super smooth, it honestly looks professional. This is my first time spraying cabinets and I'll never go back to a brush and a roller on cabinets after seeing these results. Here are some of the spray techniques I'm implementing to get the best finish. I did my best to try and keep my gun parallel and square to the surface, moving my arm across the surface for even coverage. I kept the nozzle six to eight inches away from the surface to apply the right amount of paint. I also overlapped my sprays by about 50% to make sure I got full coverage and the best result. Oh, and I wanna mention that I did not have to thin this paint for the sprayer. I was curious and I was prepared to thin it, but the 3500 did an excellent job at pumping out this paint with no problem. The next day I came back and I applied a second and final coat of the paint. Oh, I'm hot, but I'm done in here and it looks so good. It's so worth it. This paint sprayer is doing such a good job spraying this paint. The paint is just laying beautifully. Haha, <laughs> looks so good. With the big project of painting done, I can now move on to some of the finishing details. White oak is one of my most favorite woods and I think it will look wonderful trimming out the new window next to the blue cabinets. Now I can finally bring in and reinstall the restored countertops. And I could also bring in the doors and drawers to reinstall those as well. And here's a tip. We noted each door location inside the hinges protected from the paint by tape. So we knew exactly where to reinstall each door. I also installed clear rubber bumpers to protect the newly painted surfaces. I'm going to add white tile to this whole wall, and here are the tiles we have picked out. I started by troweling my mortar onto the wall and also back buttering the tiles. I used my laser level as a guide and I worked my way all along the wall. However, once I got to the larger wall area, I found it was easier to just apply the mortar to the back of the tiles and not the wall, and with these small tiles, that seemed to work just fine. Here's how I worked around the outlets. I would mark my cut lines with a wax pencil and then I would use my tile saw to easily make the cut. I'll link my saw down below if you're interested. On the opposite wall behind the range, I'm attaching a temporary ledger board, which is a level board to support the first row of tiles while the mortar dries. I need to let the mortar dry overnight and I can't add grout until then. So in the meantime, I can tackle a couple other small details. I got these brass round knobs, which are also kind of outside of my comfort zone, but I think I'm digging them. I'm contemplating black knobs as well, so I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think and I'll link these knobs down below if you're interested. Not only is this old faucet not really our style, but it also has some issues with water pressure. We ordered this new brass faucet and I'm excited to get them switched out. Okay, grout time. I mixed up a white non-sanded grout and worked it into all of the grout lines. Follow the instructions on the bag for your particular grout. It even has pictures, super easy. One simple upgrade for any kitchen is to replace your old outlets. These have been painted over and over, they're dated and they, they just don't really work very well. I switched out the outlets and the switches and this project alone is a big upgrade. It's really fast and easy to do. Just make sure you switch off your electrical before you start. This gray wall has been on my hit list for a while now. 
The texture is extreme and we'd rather have smooth walls. I've successfully skim coated a few of these walls in our house now, so here's a quick overview on what works for me. A sander with 60 grit sandpaper is a great way to take down these high spots. A shop vac attached to your sander isn't necessary, but it's really convenient for the dust and cleanup. Plus three joint compound is what I've always used with really great success. It goes on easily and it sands really well. It comes in a bag and I empty it into a white bucket. For some reason, the colored buckets will chip off bits of the colored plastic when you mix the compound, but the white ones don't. I add a small cup of water and then I mix it up, thinning the compound just slightly. I personally find a hawk and trowel to be the easiest method for me, but you can use any trowel method you like. I skim on the compound in light coats, just filling in the low spots of the wall. I get a large section covered, and then I come back with my first round of smoothing it all out. I have a wide finishing blade that works well at smoothing down the compound. It's nice to use, but I also often find myself just using my trowel to smooth the wall instead. Either way, work across the whole wall and don't worry if your compound isn't super smooth on this first pass. I let the wall dry and then the next day I take my four inch knife and I just knock down any high spots. Then I repeat the whole process for a second coat, further smoothing out the wall. Once that dries, I then go back with sandpaper and blend any high spots or bumps. I personally use a combo of this great 360 pole sander and a finishing sanding sponge by hand. Once the wall is smooth, it's ready for paint. On this new wall, it's super important to use a primer sealer designed for drywall before you paint. One coat is plenty, and then I finished it up with two coats of Simply White by Benjamin Moore. If you've been wondering when I would finally get to these floating shelves, wonder no more. Just like the window trim, I'm using white oak and I'm building my own solid wood shelves. I'm going to glue two boards together to get the thickness that I need. After they dried, I took each new thick board and gave it one super straight edge on the long side with my table saw, and then I glued two boards together to now make one wider board. To hang the floating shelves, I'm gonna use this floating shelf drill guide which will help me drill holes straight into the sides of the shelves for the brackets. This is how it works. You set it on the side of your shelf and as you twist it, it perfectly centers itself. And then this circle on the top is a guide so your bit will drill straight into the wood. I set my shelf on top of the brackets and then I marked where my brackets line up on the wood. I then marked my long half inch drill bit just past the length of the brackets so I knew how far to drill. The drill guide comes with two screws to hold it in place. I'm using a corded drill here for extra power. And then I just hogged out the wood until I got the depth I needed for my bracket holes. Once I take the jig off, I like to drill one more time, but this time I rack the bit back and forth just to get a little extra room for the brackets. With both holes drilled, I can now line them up with the brackets and slide the shelf on. Easy peasy. The top two were a little more snug to get on, but I see that as a good thing. And then I finished them with the same finish that I used on the window trim. The very last thing to do was to change out these light fixtures for something more our style. And with that, this kitchen is complete. Now let's check out these before and afters. 
I keep walking into this kitchen and smiling. I'm so happy with how it turned out. The previous kitchen looked okay from afar, but when you got close, it was a mess. And now that has all been fixed and it looks so good. I think the biggest change was repainting the cabinets and I'm so glad I went out of my comfort zone and I did a bold color. I'm really impressed with the Flexio 3500 sprayer and I recommend picking one up if you have a paint project on your list. Since the counters ended up darker than I wanted, I'm contemplating changing them out soon. I might do white concrete. Stay tuned. Let me know what you think of this renovation down in the comments. If you like this project, I've got more videos linked below. Be sure to subscribe because I have a lot more home content coming and I'll see you on the next project.